uh, we will be uh, there is a, and that uh, now the session will be on cleaner production uh, philosophy need and benefits uh, uh, actually yes uh, even yesterday while we were uh, discussing the introductory session we discussed uh, regarding having uh, a, a, a say some a sort of a system where we can uh, use the philosophy of three R's like like uh, uh, recycle, reuse, and uh, uh, your. I am discussing that uh, we need to adopt this cleaner production or pollution prevention techniques into our uh, uh, for management of the environment. Uh, and uh, this recently there is a notification from government of India also that uh, various industries. Uh, they will be basically rated as four star, three star, or two star, depending upon the cleaner production efficiency they have achieved. Basically, uh, with, with uh, that is a basically a new concept which is again coming up. Uh, even today's newspaper, I have seen that okay, uh, um, uh, a few industries has been uh, given the ratings uh, from one to uh, 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 this thing, depending upon how much pollution they are generating. So it is a very incoming thing which you basically we need to look into this. That okay, uh, how what is the cleaner production and how to um, uh, what is the philosophy behind it, what is its needs and what are the benefits of adopting these sort of a techniques for proper or for sustainable development or for uh, management of our environment if you see any industrial activity you will find that any industrial activity basically it starts with uh, you can say raw material extraction there has to be some raw material and those raw materials are basically manufactured then they are transported the the, the, the product is used and uh, whatever the waste is generated that is disposed of mm. And there maybe you will having some uh, so that means that okay in this particular thing you are having this raw material input and waste output there are the two things which are important here which we want to control hmm. yeah this is again the same that why this thing uh, uh, i think we have already discussed in our yesterday's lecture that uh, the, uh, the pollution is generated and it has some sort of uh, uh, effects on on the human beings on the uh, say non living things also and uh, uh, it is different uh, uh, so the type of the pollutants we are generating for different things uh, so when once we are generating any sort of a pollution that means there is a cost involved this thing because you see that there is a loss of raw, raw materials many of the uh, say, uh, 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 raw materials basically they come uh, unused during the as a, as a waste product and th if we are not using them so we are uh, losing them also so you can see that uh, there is a huge huge cost involved in uh, uh, say in procuring the raw materials and uh, then if we are not utilizing them to the uh, their 100% uh, efficiency that means we are losing on the cost then you have the loss of intermediates and other and products so whenever the basically they can be they could have been used for a, a proper uh, otherwise uh, in a uh, some other way so we are again not uh, using them in a proper way then the manufacturing cost is involved so that that adds to your pollution cost then waste collection and handling so whatever the waste is generated that waste should be collected and properly handled uh, so uh, uh, and then uh, through transport system or through other system we have to transfer it to the uh, treatment sites and as a treatment site we we need to have a and this uh, their proper operation of the treatment facilities so that means uh, either treatment plant or some other uh, waste management facility will be created and that also involves huge cost so basically if you add all this cost so you will find that uh, there is a, uh, a lot of cost is involved lot of money is involved in managing the our uh, waste also <laughs> and then we are uh, uh, getting affected uh, uh, at the local level at the national level at the global level also because of this uh, waste generated uh, even yesterday we said okay we have to see that uh, 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 there is always a uh, uh, when we talking about the sustainable development and development activities there ha there are economic factors involved and there are the environmental factors involved so basically the th those things are uh, 
sometimes go in the opposite direction and we have to see that okay how to maintain a balance so whatever we say that we if we see it as a an, an, an this thing activity that, that this particular system is to be balanced basically as a one factor on the one side around factors and on the other side autonomic factors so both has to be given due consideration and there has to be a proper balance between these two factors <coughs> Uh, if you go back to the history of say uh, how to, how we have been managing our environment so uh, then you will find that uh, at the first instance when the industrialization started the uh, attitude was to ignore the whole thing you we okay whatever pollution water is generated waste water is generated or air is air pollution is there or some pollutants are there so we were not bothered about them because at that time we were not being uh, affected by those pollutants and uh, and they were generated in a small quantity and as you know that okay the nature has got a, a capacity to absorb all those things and um, uh, say again the uh, 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 say rectify them those uh, those uh, say and uh, what are the pollutants we are generating so at that time okay we uh, that is what but when that uh, industrialization grew up urbanization there then i think the quantum of waste generators was more and we found that okay it is better to dilute them dilution means okay you add if, if it is a water so if you are throwing your uh, uh, say what uh, uh, waste water into the uh, fresh water so it gets diluted and you can see that uh, that automatically gets uh, purified but then as population grew up and as uh, urbanization uh, more urbanization took place it so happened that okay dilution also became impossible then we thought of having the control system so lot of the treatment plants were installed Mm, and uh, then uh, the, uh, uh, our water and other uh, pollutants were managed through the treatment techniques only but uh, after having this treatment techniques also again it was found that this is not a manageable thing so that uh, the philosophy of your recycling the thing was, uh, came into your picture and through that we got this prevention technique and that is one way uh, is to achieve this sustainable development <laughs> You, if you go basically you can see that uh, 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 how this is uh, 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 say a better option uh, that preventing prevention of uh, pollution to be generated at all at the in the first instance is a better option as compared to its treatment process so so, uh, so if you look into this thing the milk loss in dairies the process is only 15% of the total milk production is about 110 million ton per year and this is the quantity which is enough basically which can provide the city of Ahmedabad about 2 kg per family of the 4 persons for 3 months. So that is a huge quantity is being wasted during our uh, milk processing only in the dairies etc. So and uh, in case of a uh, small pulp and paper industry we can reduce the water consumption to the best level already achieved by some mills and it could be uh, save enough water for the entire city of Ahmedabad at 120 liters per capita per day. So that is the basically that if we are able to save the water, recycle the water, reuse the water in a paper paper entry, that means we can achieve a lot of uh, water, uh, save a lot of water, which otherwise uh, can be used for a, uh, a more useful uh, in, in a more, more useful purpose. And, uh, and then uh, in the tanneries where we are using the chromium and uh, in a uh, in efficient way, we we find that if uh, this chromium is uh, can be saved and it, the loss is, if it is not uh, being saved, that means the loss is about rupees 140 crores per year. So this is a huge quantity or huge uh, basically and expenditure is involved when we are talking about our uh, pollution generation and uh, uh, waste generated. That means that okay, we have to see that. Uh, and we have to uh, basically to make it sustainable uh, thing so we have to uh, see that uh, whatever the uh, techniques we are adopting those techniques are to be sustainable techniques <clears throat> uh, there are other terminologies also which are used for this cleaner production uh, but uh, as i said this is the one is the pollution prevention technique then other is a waste minimization techniques then cleaner production as already we are talking about then resource conservation efficiency improvement and green productivity so these are the, the terms which are basically related uh, uh, which which can be used as a for uh, uh, cleaner production process also <coughs> uh, so <coughs> generally i think that the emphasis is on avoiding the waste or avoiding the generation of the waste so the philosophy behind this particular thing is that waste is a resource but at a wrongful place 
So whatever the waste we have generated, that means it is a it may be waste for me, but it is a useful product for some other 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 agencies also. So think talking about what is cleaner production. So cleaner production is a new and creative way of thinking about products and processes that make them. It is achieved by continuous application of strategies to minimize the generation of waste and emissions. So and the, uh, the various things involved in uh, this uh, achieving the uh, cleaner production is that we, it, we, we should uh, take it as a economic tool, as an augmented tool, as a management tool and as a quality improvement tool. So these are the four aspects which are basically uh, 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 are important while implementing the cleaner production or waste minimization or pollution prevention techniques in any system, in any organization, or in any industry. Uh, the, that is the, 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 that from where we come to uh, uh, the conclusion that the why we should have a what is the need of a having cleaner production is that first there is a cost reduction as we see that uh, if, if we are able to save water if I be able to save chromium or some other chemicals etc so huge uh, lot of uh, as a cost can uh, can be reduced then pollution control. Yes, we, we want to uh, because if uh, a lesser amount of pollution is generated, lesser pollution waste is generated, that means we, uh, lesser amount of uh, treatment technologies will be required. Uh, similarly, we can uh, conserve, uh, have a conservation of chemicals and other uh, raw materials used in the uh, in the manufacturing process. Then there is a water conservation is there. Marketing requirement as per ISO 14,000. I think uh, most of the uh, you are uh, if you if you go for uh, uh, having a business, having industry, having this cleaner uh, who are adopting this cleaner production, so they are uh, if if are having some sort of uh, uh, say business with the outside outside the countries also with other uh, countries also. So it is always uh, preferable, and they get the preference. Better working conditions, your image gets improved, and you get the new market opportunities also so these are the basically if, if we are that is the uh, uh, basically thing that okay why we should go for cleaner production process in our uh, system so uh, so out of if, if that means from the need we can think that okay what are the benefits benefits are we are getting the higher profits we are getting better quality we are we are having easier environment operation treatment uh, plant reduction in your uh, uh, environment control cost then better show floor improvement and better image of the environment uh, better image of the company <coughs> no doubt that when, when if we adopt this cleaner production techniques the it lowers the cost of production it reduces the end of pipe treatment need Maybe altogether it can be removed, or if it is earlier there, so that means lesser production generated, lesser load is there, so it is again a, a lesser costlier. Healthcare and cleaning up the environment also. So, uh, so this is a, a, a thing that okay we have seen that civilization on Earth. It's uh, human activities. They have basically, and it's uh, uh, and humanist quest to improve the quality of the life by producing more and more products has adversely affected the environment. So if we see that again, yesterday I gave this example that okay, you have some uh, input here. There is a, some industry where processing takes place, and you get one useful product and one thing as a waste. Also, these are true. So managing this waste is one of the major problems. So uh, if we can. If we have a some sort of a process where you have a input, where you have a, a processing, and in that processing you only get B and a node C, so that is an ideal situation. So we are here through this uh, cleaner production techniques. We are looking into those sort of a system where we are trying to minimize this C or altogether remove this C from this place. So that means. Looking at industrial processes, it is necessary to understand that any processor activity is never 100% efficient. So that is a, true also. It is not possible to achieve the 100% efficiency. So something is always lost to the environment and can be converted into a useful product. So whatever. Uh, uh, so if ideal thing is okay, we don't emit any discharge. That means now I think there may be a lecture on zero. Uh, initiatives, zero manufacturing initiatives. Uh, there we are talking about that. Okay, no, uh, let us completely 
reduce our generation of waste at all. But uh, yes, sometimes it may not be possible uh, to have 100% efficiency. So that means that okay, some waste is generated, but our uh, so focus will be on converting that waste into a useful product. So the, the whatever that is something is a waste or a pollution that is a uh, that becomes a liability of the industry. So this is termed as the opportunity loss to produce. So we have to look how to how we can uh, uh, basically take care of this uh, uh, take away of this opportunity and uh, then we can go ahead with about this thing. So the percentage of this waste generation is often very high and surprisingly very few industries realize it. So that is a very yeah, this, uh, 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 true also. So many of the industries. So basically, if the, anybody is in, uh, producing something, so he's as as long as he's getting the profit, he is least bothered about whatever waste is generated, what is happening to that center. So he's it is not his concern. So, uh, but uh, when it is uh, it is again uh, uh, this thing, if same can be produced as a lower cost, your profits will be very high. So that is the mission. So we have to look into the cost of optimization in the process to improve the productivity. So that means our all the things has to be productivity oriented, and uh, we have to uh, uh, and we have to look that how we, how we are not overlook this waste generation potential of the process. So. Uh, generally, if we are talking about environment, so environment management has always been considered as a dead investment with no expected returns in terms of monetary or market aspects. So that is very true. When we are talking, when we say the uh, so waste, uh, this thing, so we say it is a waste means waste. We we are not bothered about in terms of money. It is not giving us any benefit. But uh, uh, you see that uh, what is happening is that when we are talking about this end of pipe treatments. The, uh, so these treatments uh, are basically you can consider these treatments as a black box and looked at the waste along with this generated uh, and looked uh, at the waste alone after it is generated. So basically, once we generate this end of pipe treatment, so that is treated and then it is uh, thrown basically after a treatment. We are not bothered about this thing. So then this is basically the end of pipe treatment that is not bothering about the waste is the Thing which leads to weak implementation of environmental regulation due to lack of conviction among the implementing authorities. So that is a, a general tendency that okay, whatever I have generated, uh, so whatever the waste is being generated by any industry, so we are uh, think, thinking that uh, it is not my responsibility. Uh, so we, uh, as long as the proper implementation of laws is there, environmental law is there. Uh, if our danda leke agar wo hamar pas pollution control bola aata hai, to we are bothered. Agar usko so then means that uh, we can just go, go this thing. But what about the general this thing environment? Ki jo hai, uh, how we are uh, uh, definitely we are damaging our environment and we are seeing the ill effects of our this thing. Our even our uh, country also you see that all the rivers they have polluted air quality and the major uh, cities it is gone down. People don't want to come to India. I think the good example is when this uh, Obama came. In that uh, the last year, into uh, uh, our industrial this thing last year only it was. So he said, okay, that and uh, there are people who came along with him. Is they said, okay, his lifespan has been reduced by six minutes by staying in this thing in this country. So that means that uh, if we are if somebody is living in a Delhi, so what has happened to how much? Uh, so basically these are the unseen things which we are not uh, bothering about this thing and uh, then this 1991 D, uh, this uh, Rio uh, conference basically that uh, took place and that shifted the uh, focus on of development process with harmony to the environment. So we were basically saying that okay how to uh, basically have a development at the same time by taking care of the environment also. Mm. So uh, so basically in that particular thing, this concept of cleaner production methods and prevention and recycling technologies were included in order to achieve the sustainable development. So there the concept of this uh, prevention, uh, pollution prevention and recycling and uh, of the waste came into uh, So So generally then what is the cleaner production? So cleaner production in general terms describes a preventive approach and is a win and win strategy. It protects environment degradation. It is in the consumer's interest. 
it uh, is basically taking care of health and safety of the workers also and also improves the efficiency profitability and competitiveness of the enterprise that means all the benefits we are getting if we are adopting the linear production process so uh, so and uh, if we define the linear production so if, uh, now we can say that linear production is defined as a continuous application of an integrated preventive environment strategy applied to process to products to services in order to increase overall efficiency and reduce risk to the human and environment so that means we are taking care of our uh, uh, process our products and then whatever is services we are providing so that uh, uh, there is a overall uh, improvement in the efficiency so when we say production process so cleaner production involves the conservation of raw materials conservation of energy elimination of toxic materials like chromium i said we are using for in the tanning and all that so okay why not to have some alternative to the chromium for that purpose why not to have a better option so that is the thing that okay alternative materials and the reduction in the quantities and toxicity of the waste and emissions so but if if i am not able to this thing that we have to look into the ways that how we can reduce the generation of the waste at the source <laughs> then for product development and design this kinetic uh, production involves the reduction of negative impacts throughout the life cycle of the product from raw material extraction to the ultimate disposal so uh, so we are taking out so whatever the negative impacts are there so how we can think that okay they can be reduced and uh, 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 and then uh, in the during the whole process we are th it, uh, we are thinking about those things only if if say if we are utilizing a, a some energy uh, in uh, in in the manufacturing process so uh, maybe we are if 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 same energy can be utilization of energy can be reduced whether we can improve the efficiency of energy utilization say from uh, 20% to 40% that means we are generating lesser to sort of a pollution so that things have to be seen in terms of your analysis and uh, for the service industry we say that pollution production was the incorporation of environmental consideration in the design and delivery of the services yes like uh, and no it is example can be this you have this uh, um uh, i can say energy efficient lights what what are the uh, earlier we were using this uh, uh, that uh, uh, or, or basically the routine type of bulbs which we were using then we we we, we uh, shifted to the cfls and from the cfls we are coming to leds so leds uh, means that okay they are they, they work at a uh, consume only say 8 watts 10 watts of energy as against 100 to 200 and give the same luminous and same uh, basically intensity of the light to us and uh, so that sort of a techniques basically we have to see that okay those can be in, uh, uh, think into this thing uh, so another question comes in mind is okay what is the difference between then cleaner production and pollution control so uh, so cleaner production we can say we can see it as an alternative to conventional end of pipe strategies because whatever end of pipe means that okay after uh, the pollution has been created that means we are collecting that waste and then we are uh, processing it so that we are not looking into that okay end of pipe technologies our aim is to completely control this end of pipe approach uh, so as to, uh, and treatment of the waste uh, uh, and basically to control the waste and the uh, emission where they are created at the source reduce the waste at the source only so the okay, this pollution prevention aims to prevent uh, the waste and emission to be generated in the first place and this reduces the need to install and operate quite often this expensive end of pipe technologies like your waste water treatment system and gases emissions so it is a huge cost is involved if you go uh, the suppose uh, like city of chandigarh is having a very big treatment plant and uh, and then it operation of that treatment plants are requires a uh, lot of electricity also lot of manpower also so why not to basically have a small small treatment plants at a different place and recycle the water again uh, for uh, irrigation and for other purposes also so those sort of things are to be thing uh, are to be adopted that means so cp offers a twin benefit of improving economic performance of the company and simultaneously reduces the environmental impact so basically that means if we are recycling the water 
we are utilizing same water our uh, water bill will go down and uh, it is a benefit to the industry also uh, and we are not installing any treatment plant so it is again a benefit to the industry also that means okay we are so it is it is says we continuous improvement and uh, that has to be seen uh, basically uh, one is a profitability and other is your reduction in the uh, environment and pack system also so so this is basically you can see if you compare the both the performance of these two techniques invest uh, with respect to investment this is the end of pipe technology this is the uh, uh, this is the cleaner production technologies so it means end of pipe is you can see it is on the higher side investment is high this performance is poor whereas in cleaner production process investment is low and performance is high so that means there is a economic benefit involved in your uh, adopting the cleaner production processes in your uh, in the system so that means the key difference between the pollution and uh, is the okay, at the timing basically timing means that okay we are controlling at uh, at the source only and then not uh, not after it has been generated uh, and uh, so basically that is the pollution is an after the event react and treat approach okay react kar and whereas cleaner production reflects a proactive anticipatory and preventive philosophy Okay. We, are pro we are playing the role proactive. We are anticipating how this much waste will be generated, and then we are trying to prevent that thing to occur. So that is one. So always, this is a uh, well-known principle: prevention is better than cure. So prevention is better than the treatment here also. Uh, but the, at the same time, this does not mean that, however, the end of pipe technologies will never be required. By using a cleaner production philosophy to tackle pollution and waste problem, the dependence on end of pipe solutions may be reduced, or in some cases, it can be completely eliminated. It it, it will happen. I think you can you can see even uh, you are uh, uh, this vehicular also. Earlier we we, we had the also like Bharat one, Bharat two, Bharat three. You know we are going for see the Bharat six. So there is a basically that uh, uh, only thing is that okay whenever there's this, these things are imposed on the industry so they say that okay we will be uh, burdened and lot of uh, the cost involved will be high but at the same time you see the benefit to the environment also so you will cite that okay alternatively we are looking for alternative fuels at many locations and many places uh, so there also we were thinking that okay the type of the f uh, f fuels we are using that sh that should have lesser amount of pollutants. So those those are the things basically. So we can it may situation may come where I think we are definitely we have reduced the generation of uh, say uh, waste at many locations at many uh, uh, from many places. But at the same time, a time may come where we can completely eliminate the generation of the waste also. Hmm. So cleaner production can be and has already been applied to raw material extraction, manufacturing, agriculture, fisheries, transportation, tourism, hospital. Energy generation and information systems. <laughs> so, the application of this cleaner production requires changing attitudes. Basically, if we are having the pollution control, pollution control means that there is a some agency which is जो कि डंडा लेके हमारे पीछे है, ठीक है? We are uh, हमें डर है कि हमारे fine ना हो जाए, हमें uh, imprisonment ना हो जाए, तो whatever the law says. So it is basically a treatment or your that comes through your law only. Basically, yes, you cannot uh, throw that much waste into your this thing. But whereas a cleaner production, so it is a it, you have to change your attitude. First, you have to be a, 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 a shows you are having a, should have some sort of a concern for the environment, and uh, your attitude should be okay. I should not generate the waste at all. So that is the one. Your first attitude uh, changes changes required. In th change in thinking is required. So in many cases, the most significant CP benefits can be gained through literal thinking without adopting technological solutions. A change in attitude on the part of company directors, managers, employers is crucial to gaining the most from cleaner production. So we have to see that okay, whosoever is the top boss, basically he should have that attitude in in him. Okay, my industry should be should look neat and clean. My uh, like. You are, if you are in your house, you are thinking, okay, my house should be very neat and clean. So similar way, when you are working as a place, so he should be having that sort of attitude. It should be very neat and clean. 
so then uh, you have to see that okay how to uh, uh, basically uh, 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 this adopt the linear progression techniques so this new and creative approach to enable the progression process uh, uh, is less waste intensive and basically is based on different techniques so basically we can uh, have different sort of a things like linear progression techniques if we say one is the source reduction there are three things other is the recycling and thing is the uh, for, uh, then is the product modification right in source reduction we have good housekeeping we have process change and uh, then uh, through process change means that okay we are either changing the input material change we are taking care of better control process and then uh, we are either we have to go for equipment modification or we have to go for technology change so these are uh, like this we have to see that okay so this is important how to change the process either through changing by input material by better control process by equipment modification or by adopting the different technology and when we say recycling so recycling means on site recovery and use and creation of useful products useful by products so from that we can how we uh, how we can create a uh, other useful product so that is the one thing so we are think keeping in mind that okay waste generated at one place is a, uh, is, a, is a resource for some other person so these are the basically you can say give a picture of uh, what are the cleaner production uh, technologies and techniques so once we say good housekeeping that means we are adopting the system to prevent leakages spillages through preventive maintenance schedules and routine equipment inspections yeah. <laughs> i think many th many places we, we we it is a common site uh, say water supply water pipes are leaking or uh, some oil spillages or some other things are taking place so basically the first thing is to plug them <laughs> then improvement to work practice and proper maintenance can produce significant benefits this is also one of the major things okay how to have a proper maintenance system in place we have a maintenance system for our vehicles when we uh, purchase a vehicle so maintenance we get a maintenance schedule of that vehicle with that particular thing so basically when to change the uh, oil when to change the filter when to change the other things when to change the tire so all things are well written so basically we have to <coughs> do that thing Uh, for each and every uh, thing in our industry also so these options are typically low cost so basically there no expenditure is involved in in this thing okay you, you need a manpower you need a this thing so, so this is a good host speaking is a very very good option for uh, con taking control of your this thing then you have the process change process change will involve input material change that means that substitution of input material by eco friendly non toxic or less toxic than existing and renewable material preferably having longer service life example is okay in, in tanning if we are using the chromium for uh, this thing so whether uh, instead of chromium chromium because chromium is a very toxic material very costly material why not to use some lesser costing you can say take the from civil engineering you can take the example of this uh, uh, fly ash based cement and the raw material basically that lime has to be queried from uh, the sources uh, from different sources so uh, uh, replacing them by a good percentage of your waste fly ash so that is a, this thing nowadays if you want to go to any thermal plant if you want to buy a fly ash it is not possible to uh, easily get them also because that things have been developed to that extent where fly ash is being utilized in a very very profitable so that means that okay we are using uh, we are changing the input raw material is being changed then better process control that modification of the working procedures machine operating instructions process control parameters and process record keeping in order to run the processes at a higher efficiency and with lower waste generation and emissions so many times we have to see that okay uh, in any any processing system uh, where uh, uh, how we can improve the efficiency so that like if we are uh, as i said if we in the process we are utilizing uh, say energy uh, uh, coal based energy or burning coal and all that so better not, not to have alternative energy so that it produces lesser waste or why not to some in in some of the this thing the wherever you are you are having uh, high heat generated so why not to recirculate that heat if we can uh, if we require a fuel to and uh, burning a, uh, a heat a heat requirement up to 100 uh, 100 degree sorry 1000 degree or to uh, 1500 degree centigrade if we can recirculate that this is of to to uh, in order to achieve that efficiency we require lesser amount of fuel generated so that sort of a thing basically we have to see that how to control the process and then equipment modification 
modification of existing production equipment and utilities for instance by addition of mirroring and controlling devices in order to run process at the higher efficiency and lower waste and emission generation waste also will be the one of the good uh, options mm -hmm. uh, maybe an example could be like you have go your this uh, modern day acs nowadays the acs are coming with inbuilt uh, say you are uh, solar panels you, they are working on this thing because uh, if you are having a ac which is working on the solar uh, this thing so you are not using that electricity for that purpose so that means that okay when modification some sort of a modification is required we had a uh, we have no fans which are uh, working with uh, which with good good efficiency at a uh, 20 volt system, uh, output only as compared to 75 of the conventional fans so that sort of a efficiency improvements or equipment modifications are required technology change Completely, I think replacement of the technology, processing sequence, and uh, or synthesis pathway in order to minimize waste and emission generation during the production is required. And then recycling, I, we have been discussing that recycling, on-site recovery and reuse, reuse of wasted materials in the same processes or for another useful application within the company. How, uh, whatever the waste is generated, it we are trying to reuse them. Uh, like uh, if you say that in your mid, in, in your cement plants you have installed uh, this uh, electrostatic precipitators. that means the very fine materials which is a good raw material which is going away without uh, basically uh, in the coming into the manufacturing process so that is being arrested and that is recirculated so if you compare the cost of the installation of a, a electrostatic precipitator and then recovery of the raw material you may say that okay this it's it's cost gets recovered you know this thing so basically that is how to take care of these things like similarly what are we use in your this thing you are whenever you may say that okay i gave an example of your diesel or your recycle, recycling of your uh, hot air into your into your production process so that is also one example of your uh, reuse and recovery at the site then production of useful byproducts. Uh, so, uh, so in this we will see that modification of the waste generation process in order to transfer the wasted material into a material that can be reused or recycled for another application within an outside company. So, uh, I gave an example yesterday of one uh, that uh, uh, preparing a soft drink utilizing the from the washing of ice cream only. So that that particular vendor, so he he created a, 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 a very uh, useful soft drink, and uh, uh, from which he started earning profit also without getting involved into a extra cost. <coughs> so then you have the production modification and the new product design. So changing the product design can result in benefits through the life cycle of the product, including reduced utilization of hazardous substances, reduced waste disposal reduced energy consumption and more efficient production processes so new product design is a long term strategy and may require new production equipment and marketing efforts but payback and ultimately will be very rewarding so many of the processes they have they they, they have gone uh, a lot of uh, this thing uh, uh, change if if uh, uh, if if we are not able to uh, go with the change that means after some time our thing will become redundant okay, whatever we are producing its cost will be very high and uh, that is what has happened if you see the processing of evolution of the various vehicles uh, the so earlier we were having this ambassadors and other cars so now they are we were not able to cope up with that efficiency so they have to go with the uh, they have been phased out so basically that is in your interest only that uh, if you are not able to do that so you go for uh, the higher sort of a things mm. so they will be so new product design is a long term strategy so it, it requires uh, not only production equipment and marketing efforts but also uh, but uh, your payback is very rewarding that means mm. so then that means that okay, we have seen that okay if you are investing in the cleaner production it is a beneficial to us so that means that investment in cleaner production to prevent pollution and reduce resource consumption is more effective than continuing to rely on increasingly expensive end of pipe solutions when cp and pc options are carefully evaluated and compared the CP options are often more cost effective than the overall. Okay. Then, the, then you are, uh, say, as compared to your treatment technologies. The initial investment for CP options and for installing PC technology may be similar, but the ongoing cost of pollution control will generally be greater than the cleaner production. This is a, this is a fact. Initially, if you are investing more, it 
you you are getting recovered also so initially if suppose we are using this led bulb only so initially it cost is 10 times higher but you can see energy consumption and its longevity longevity with respect to its life and all organic compounds are emitted to the atmospheric that generating order problems and failing to take advantage of these potential heat power the lot of heat is being generated here also you can see air emission is there so this air emission is also to be controlled so that means the aspect to be improved are the known recycling of water during all the productive pro uh, production process especially during washing stages implied a higher consumption of it as well as bigger generation of the waste water so we are when we are using we are not because we are not recycling the water that means we are uh, wasting the water also then the emission from the cooking unit carried organic compounds as they were not treated but directly evacuated to the atmosphere it's not only a problem of water and air pollution but also a loss of potential energy heat energy also so because it is a heated air so why not to reutilize re 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 that heated air so some products generated during the process such as oils from the cooking unit starch were managed as waste products instead of taking advantage of their potential use in the other industries so starch is a very useful product in many of the industries to starch ko ko bahut si industry lene ko tarajenge instead of throwing them directly why not to uh, search for those industries where starch can be utilized again so that means the main and solution are basically cooling production and life cycle analysis is required so action taken sir so th those were carried out okay that means you are making an inventory of your things okay we are how much pollution is generated at at what level at what what process so yeah, like for us washing then you are slicing etc you have seen that okay how much water waste water is generated how where the air is being emitted so those things you are uh, uh, controlling then so that means that okay you have identified those areas where the water is being generated so here you can say you you are looking you have identified your uh, processes where cleaner production can be applied so that means recycling of the water from the washings and peeling stages by means of installation of a treatment unit consisting of a filter theek hai wahi pe water ko filter kar diya koi usme zyada to hai nahi ya washing mein kitna pani hoga kitna kya usme gand aa raha hai kya usme wo ho raha hai so that means you are recycling that water by having some sort of a treatment at source itself then recovery of the oil used in the cooking unit and sell the soap to the soap companies theek hai starch hai जो आपके रिकवरी ऑल उसको कर रहे हैं वो सोप कंपनीज में उनका 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 वो रॉ मटेरियल है अवर दिस इज अ वेस्ट फॉर अस बट इज अ रॉ मटेरियल फॉर द सोप कंपनीज आल्सो सोप यूनिट्स आल्सो सो व्हाई नॉट टू सेल देम दोस द स्टार्स टू द सोप कंपनीज आल्सो रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ फ्यूल बाय एलपीजी एज फ्यूल सोर्स फॉर द हीटिंग पर्पसेस ठीक है इंसटेड ऑफ बर्निंग ऑफ दिस थिंग हैविंग कोल एंड बोइल्ड एंड सो एलपीजी कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर दिस पर्पस आल्सो सेंड रिकवरी ऑफ द हीट फ्रॉम द इंसिनेटर बाय ट्रीटिंग द एयर एमिशन जनरेटेड इन द कुकिंग यूनिट सो व्हाटएवर द हीट इज बीइंग रिकवर्ड दैट इज टू बी रीसर्कुलेटेड अगेन सो आफ्टर दैट यू कैन सी दैट this is a water treatment unit one is uh, applied here in the uh, in the water washing machine you, treatment unit is where the water the water is there so that is basically again again going back for the washing purposes so after after filtration after treatment it is again being recirculated here only so peeling pulp water so soaking is the hot water is there so that waste water is again this thing so slicing and peeling so whatever the we are waste water we are thing you are having a unit to recover the starch so that starch is being given to your textile or some other units also so then in the third stage whatever the air emission is there that air is in the cooking the vessel to cover so basically that in the this treatment system this air emission is being controlled by having lpg and then heat recovery is being utilized so this heat is again recirculated to the for the cooking purposes only so so that means you are controlled your wastewater you are controlled your heat so you are called controlled your air emission also no it becomes a cleaner production process so the benefits we have seen that okay the financial overview of the filling and reducing the waste water generated from the washing processes benefits reduction of the waste water consumption reduction of the waste water generation savings up to 2 meter cube per hour means that 18 meter cube per day ek ghante mein humne ek ek din mein 18 meter cube per day water bacha liya so cost of the cost of the water use if we see at the this thing rate is so 1 meter cube per day is rupees 8000 per year so 18 ka bachaya so that means One lakh forty-four thousand per year. Cost of the filter is 
टू लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड डेट मीन्स पे बैक पीरियड इज टू ईयर्स ओनली तो दो साल के बाद आप प्रॉफिट में है ठीक है इनिशियल कॉस्ट इज बेसिकली यू आर गेटिंग कॉस्ट रिकवर्ड सो टू आफ्टर टू ईयर्स इट इज कंप्लीटली सो डेट मीन्स इट इज यूर सेविंग ओनली ठीक है so there are still some actions okay this is a, at at one time you have taken this action but then there will be continuous improvement you will keep on thinking how to further reduce the waste water usage and at some at some stage you will reach at the completely you are reducing your water completely you are reducing your energy also so you are depending on so that means the recycling of the water from soaking and slicing process after a previous uh, treatment of the waste water okay that can be uh, again th think of recovery of the starch from soaking and slicing stages to be sold to the textile industries the environment benefits obtained by cleaner production measures undertaken in the manufacturing process as referring to water a considerable decrease of consumption as well as reduction of pollution load and volume of the waste water generated has been achieved here also a reduction of energy consumption was also achieved by reclamation of the heat from the incineration process and finally it must be pointed out that a better management of the waste products has been carried out thus implying not only environment benefits but also economic benefit to the companies so that is what through this example we have seen that a small intervention at uh, our uh, for uh, application of your cleaner production technique has benefited not only to the company but also to the environment also so our raw water usage reduction has been achieved our uh, pollution to the uh, water bodies and to the air has been reduced and at the same time we are getting the economic benefit also so this is again and uh, one more example uh, which is the precise the cleaner production initiative of a dairy involved in the milk production and processing and packaging so in addition to pasteurized milk the dairy products cheese butter uh, curd and ice cream were being uh, prepared products were sold primarily with the regional market only the dairy processes approximately uh, 1,30,000 liters of milk per day and surplus milk and milk that fails in bacterial count is processed to manufacturing again season uh, so so basically that how this environment is and for action and address are milk delivery trucks and where they delivery trucks were washed once per day with the combination of hot and cold water okay then process equipment shortage tanks uh, storage tanks sorry uh, process equipment storage tanks and process and delivery areas are also washed once per shift with hot and cold water all cleaning operations were performed using open ended rubber hoses okay operations used fingers at the discharge end of the hose to develop a spray for cleaning theek hai high pressure banane ke liye usko fingers so use kar rahe the then spray created manually was relatively inefficient for effective cleaning theek hai fingers aap kitna use karenge agar nozzle laga denge zyada pressure banega because of the hoses were not equipped with the shut off nozzles the water was often left running for a period of time until the operators had time to shut off the needle valves located on the walls so basically yes that means whenever we are trying to implement the clean production technologies it is important to study the uh, complete process and uh, find out in at what unit of operation what sort of a waste is generated kahan se kaise uski jo hai technique kya hai pure process ko study karna padega theek hai so measures karne ke liye the clean production techniques first is a process modification was taken so that means that okay clear production measures were initiated during the waste minimization products methods for reducing water use were investigated and implemented high pressure washers connected directly to the water supply lines were purchased for cleaning of trucks production areas and equipment and often ended rubber hoses were an uh, open ended rubber hoses were equipped with shut off spray wall nozzles okay as a result of the project consumption uh, of the waste water Uh, reduced by 30000 meter cube per year and waste uh, water discharges were reduced by the same amount theek okay? hai the cost of the equipment was about rupees 30000 and there is a uh, uh, say uh, uh, saving of about rupees uh, 15000 and the payback period again is very small very good this thing so this is a one example another example so another example is basically you can take from the foundry sector so this is the foundry sector which has been identified as one of the major rail pollution units such as the kopla furnace the so most of the these units fall in the small and unorganized sector you can see that foundry jahan pe lagai wahan pe localized hai so they are not so they are so having a very limited cap, uh, amount available with them and they are don't have a uh, adequate knowledge technical knowledge also not available with them also so about 80% of units have capacity less than 3 tons per hour of the molten metal and total output less than 1000 meter uh, meter ton per month 
and uh, then various studies had revealed that emission containing mainly particulate matter and sulfur dioxide from melting section of such units are on a very high side okay so we said that the emission containing mainly particulate matter which is a major area of concern and sulfur dioxide again is as a thing so they were on the very very high side in your in your this thing okay so this was the basically you know particulate emission 1000 to 2000 2500 sulfur dioxide emission 350 to 500 flue gas volume was from 8500 to 10600 temperature uh, basically that's 550 to 650 degrees and, and particle size distribution in ranging from less than 5 micron 20 to 25% uh, 5 to 10 micron 20 to 25% and more than 10 micron means like 50% so that was a basically a thing so so basically it, uh, the, because of this emission and because of the proximity to the taj mahal the uh, supreme court ordered the closing of those furnaces and uh, 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 basically throughout the country they were uh, closed and this was a result in urgent need for identifying the cost of it. so once the order came from the supreme court so it was thought that uh, how to reduce the pollution uh, uh, in that this so these were the pollution control measures melting from this thing what are the low level dust level so uh, up to 3 ton 450 or uh, more than 3 ton per hour is a 150 so if you see that what are the processes involved in a uh, in the in the foundry process is the first is you are you you have to melt the raw material so melting of the charged materials where you require lot of energy molding and core making then you put them in the molds and give them a particular shape you have a sand preparation sand is there and uh, metal pouring metal is poured into those molds and then uh, machining etc is is to be uh, achieved basically through that purpose so you see that in kopla furnace melting of pigar and cast iron is done with the help of a hard coke coke burning se ho raha tha theek hai kola jalaya ja raha tha about 1/3 of the heat supplied by the coke is available in the molten metal only 1/3 heat which was generated that was available for molting the for melting the metal only that Uh, remaining two third was going as a waste. On an average, metal coke ratio had been found to be five is to one. Okay, जो आपकी उसकी heat की ratio है, it is very high, five times more. In order to reduce pollution load and to reduce the fuel consumption, an in-depth study was carried out uh, in Punjab and been modification air distribution system and improved metallurgic processes. This industry has enhanced its metal coke ratio from five is to one to nine is to one. resulting in and saving about 2.5 tons of coke per heat of the uh, for a 8 hours duration so 5 and 9 chaligi uske option c so the, so control mares are divided cold blast copula so in conventional fafula you can see air is fed through a, one row of a, 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 a you are channels at a height about 2 feet to 2 feet from the base whereas the, this was modified where at is uh, where is fed through two rows of your channels okay in sort of single row it is it is an effect of the modification is that higher wrapping temperature of the metal and low coke consumption so usme kya hua ki basically jab aapka isse ka do rows mein gaya to temperature jo hai aapka control ho gaya usme zyada metal uh, jo hona shuru ho gaya aur consumption of the coal got reduced so effective sir means you effective hydro coupler in the conversion coupler basically it was 12 foot to 14 feet whereas the modification it increased to 17 feet so effective modification was that okay better retention of available heat in the molten metal so iske height jyada hone se heat karne se uska uh, area bad gaya area badne se jo hai it it was it, it started giving a better efficiency then limiting the amount of air in the conversion coupler So basically, no arrangement of measuring the volume and pressure of air blast, generally air supply used, was in uh, uh, was present there. So in the in the in the modified system, provision of instrumentation to measure the blast volume and pressure was introduced, and it resulted in effective, uh, basically modification resulted in higher tapping of temperature of metal and reduction in coal coal consumption. So any energy could be heat could be reutilized when we thought that okay, how much heat is required. पहले तो ठीक है जितना बर्न हो गया वी आर नॉट नोइंग हाउ मच टेंपरेचर 1100 1200 1400 चला गया इट वाज नॉट अंडर कंट्रोल सो व्हेन द सिस्टम वाज इंस्टॉल्ड टू कंट्रोल टू नो ओके हाउ मच हीट इज जनरेटेड दैट मींस नो यू नो ओके यू आर प्रोसेसेस टू टेक पेस एट द 600 700 तो उससे बियॉन्ड आप हीट को जाने नहीं देंगे सो दैट आल्सो रिजल्टेड इन अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अ सिस्टम देन मैकेनिकल चार्जिंग इन द ऑटोमेटिक वेसिंग तो कन्वेंशनल चार्जिंग वाज बाय हैंड मैनुअल 
कितना कब डाला कितना किया इट वाज नोट देयर फिर इन द इन इन द मॉडिफाइड सिस्टम ए प्रोविजनल मैकेनिकल चार्जिंग सिस्टम एंड एंड द चार्जिंग बकेट वर वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड सो सो बेसिकली द इसमें क्या फायदा हुआ इट सेव द लेबर इट रिड्यूस द मटेरियल हैंडलिंग एक्सीडेंट्स इट एनहांस द लाइफ ऑफ रिफैक्टरी एंड रिड्यूस पर्टिकुलर एमिशन ड्यू टू लेस एरोजन ऑफ द रिफैक्टरी दिस थिंग सो दैट इज आल्सो वन ऑफ द गुड सिस्टम सो सो चार्ज ओपनिंग कन्वेंशनल कपड़ा देर वाज चार्ज करने के लिए जो डोर बनाया था इट वाज हैविंग अ साइज ऑफ 42 टू 24 फीट वेयर आई इन द मॉडिफाइड दिस थिंग द चार्ज इट्स इट्स साइज वाज रिड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम 42 टू 30 दिस थिंग दैट मींस इफेक्ट मींस दैट लेस अमाउंट ऑफ इनग्रेस एयर हेल्प्स इन मेंटेनिंग द हाई टेंपरेचर एंड द टेंपरेचर जो है आपका ओपनिंग कम होगी ठीक है बाहर की एयर कम जा रही है तो टेंपरेचर आपका जल्दी कंट्रोल आ गया सो दैट इज आल्सो रिजल्टेड इन अ बेटर सॉर्ट ऑफ अ थिंग देन प्रॉपर साइजिंग ऑफ द लाइमस्टोन एंड कोक ठीक है यूज ऑफ कोक एंड लाइमस्टोन वर यूज्ड इन द स्मॉल पीसेस वेयर एज इन मॉडिफिकेशन ए साइज वाज डिसाइडेड ओके 4 इंच टू 18 इंच साइज ऑफ कोक एंड बिग साइज लाइमस्टोन वर यूज्ड फॉर दिस पर्पस सो इट आल्सो रिजल्टेड इन गिविंग अ बेटर मोर यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ द हीट आल्सो सो बेसिकली इट प्रोवाइडेड अ एनहांस क्वालिटी ऑफ कॉस्टिंग एंड बेटर कंबशन एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द कोक देन वेइंग ऑफ द रॉ मटेरियल्स कितना जाना है कितना डालना है इट वाज दिस थिंग सो इन द कन्वेंशनल सिस्टम by guess the quantity was being fed very high variations were there basically then that that resulted in unnecessary wastage of coke and limestone whereas in kapla with the modification feeding the raw material after weighing to ye kitna usko chahiye utna hi dal rahe hain so effect was increase in the metal coke ratio okay then uh, another thing which was there uh, extended stake uh, stake height beyond charging door so in the in the sort of in the conventional system there was no control in this kitni marzi bana do whereas in the commodified extended height 16 feet beyond the charging door charging door se banaya uski height fix kar di 16 feet ki so what it created it created additional drought avoiding chance of backfiring in copper farmers conservation of heat being emitted in the environment theek okay? hai so it conserved the heat jitni height thi pehle uh, control nahi tha but ab usse control kar raha hai ki kitni heat environment mein jani hai that heat was being controlled so achievement with adoption resulted in saving of more than 2.5 ton of coke costing rupees 10000 in each heat for 3 ton per hour couple so this means that 40% saving was achieved in the process metal coke ratio and asked from 5 is to 1 to 9 is to 1 particular emission drastically reduced with less consumption of coke and other improved metallurgical practices life of the refactory it enhanced got enhanced and kapla melting capacity got increased so that is the advantage we achieved so modified kapla has a payback period of 4 to 6 months uh, only and this technology has financially benefited about 400 small kapla furnaces in the state of punjab alone and has improved the ambient air quality also this is a one example of your cleaner production being applied for the system so Uh, and uh, from here i think what we are thinking is we are coming to a uh, concept of zero emission so this concept is also picking up so concept of zero emission or zero waste basically it needs to be provided after all the cp mayors have been adopted and waste generation has been is minimized we need to look at the waste and its content can it be used by another industry as a raw material theek hai at present there are many international and national website dedicated to trading waste what is needed is to shift our, in our attitude that uh, instead of considering it as a waste residues secondary material surplus they need to be considered this material as a resource and provide information accordingly industry association could play a very important role in creating a waste uh, exchange information system to support i think uh, uh, people in our uh, students do have attended that uh, uh, startup uh and uh, on that day i think so there he was giving that uh, particular example that okay you uh, see the various websites and see the okay, in the particular sort of a industry in the leather industry what sort of a uh, chemicals are needed and how this thing you, you uh, if those could be gathered and then i think uh, there can be alternative and you can have your own startup okay by supplying this thing so that sort of a things are there basically you can look into your thing so there are the numerous examples of waste generation in india and abroad these include information of websites and waste water also so we have to look into those waste and website and we have to see that okay so coming to this that means that okay through these examples we say that okay when we are talking about cp techniques we are saying that okay good housekeeping process change input material change better process control 
equipment modification, recycling and reuse, on-site recovery and reuse, creation of useful byproducts and product modification are few of the things which we are looking into this thing and once we say that we have developed this cleaner production, it lowers the risk of the worker, it lowers the risk to the community, it it, it gives a, a better uh, products to the uh, to the consumers and basically it is it is useful for the future generation that is why it is a sustainable approach also so so we have seen through the example we generally the myths about the cleaner production is that it has limited potential now we understand that no it's it is not a limited potential its potential is much much higher as compared to what we think required sophisticated technology in many of the cases only small changes were required not a very sophisticated technology also requires professional uh, no professional is required basically I think same person same people were doing adopting those technologies requires highly educated and skilled workforce no same workers can be this is again a myth only requires high financial resources okay. requires major shutdown of the plants requires space as to production cost total automation is required so one time activity you know it is an ongoing activity good only for companies like big companies you can say but this is all the this thing any company anybody any uh, unit can approach basically your this thing so so basically that is what once you are seeing that okay you have you need to think what can I do I am not a, generally the attitude is okay I am working in a situation I am working in this thing okay this is not my this thing why I should bother this is a general concern. Who me? I am only a small worker here. I do not think I can do much. I have so much to do in the mill. I have got other activities why I should think about the environment. There are other persons who will think about this thing. It is not my work and I do not have time. So these are the general attitudes for adopting the things uh, for our this thing. Hmm. We have already discussed this. That means just I am winding uh, up basically CP techniques that we were taking care of our loss of raw materials, loss of intermediate products, manufacturing cost, waste collection, handling, operation at different facilities. So that means, uh, so good housing practices, yes, we have already discussed better production scheduling, better energy management, maintenance program, working instructions, training and incentive programs, adequate process control operations, proper maintenance cleaning, tidying and clean workplace, Okay, input raw materials so change already we said that okay replace toxic or open material materials with less toxic materials use of renewable materials use materials with longer lifetime have a uh, material purification then you have the technology changes adopt the new chemical new processes new equipment technology adopt uh, carry out uh, equipment modification use the uh, uh, basically process condition in an optimal way temperature control etc should be ensured increase automation uh, adopt this thing wherever automation like we have seen that okay bucket uh, by a hand bucket only you have a, a system where you are having a automatic weighing system improved process control improved equipment layout yeah and then product modification okay you go for eco design product life extension environment friendly packaging and then you go for recycling and reuse on-site recovery and reuse of the raw materials wastewater cooling water waste sheet transferring waste into a useful byproduct and waste segregation and storage so if we, if, we, if we talk about strategy, the first, uh, the steps involved is, first is, okay, how to start it, getting started. Getting started means you carry out your, uh, 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 think about that, okay, I have to adopt this skin production. Then the step two, you analyze the process setup. Then the step three, you generate the, okay, and after carrying out analysis, see, okay, where are the opportunities to apply the cleaner production process. And once you have adopted those cleaner production, you have to select the cleaner production solutions and go for implementing those solutions and then maintain those cleaner production systems into your system. So this is the one whole thing is okay. Getting started means that make waste minimization cleaner production team, list process steps, basically unit operation and identify and select the wasteful process uh, in, the, in this particular step. Then analyze the various steps, prepare the flow charts, make a material energy balance, assign cost of the waste streams, then review of the process, identify the waste and their causes. Then generating the opportunities means that okay, developing the uh, wastewater waste minimization and production opportunity and select a workable waste minimization and cleaner production opportunity. Then selecting the wastewater and CP solution means that okay, you assess the technical feasibility, assess the economic viability, evaluate the environment aspects and select the solution for implementation. Then implement 
these techniques. So prepare a flowchart for the implementation, implement the solution, and monitor and evaluate the events. And then you finally you carry out the basically the addressing. You carry out the uh, maintaining waste uh, uh, minimization and cleanup production process to by having a sustainable solution and identifying the sex the various waste uh, this thing so basically this then you go back again so this is a you see this whole thing is a continuous process so keep on analyzing the system and continuous improvement will be taking place in your uh, in the in, in your system so till to achieve the zero emission you will say so if you compare the this thing so summarize it we will say it makes a good business sense because you are getting profit it makes good environmental sense because you are protecting the environment it does not necessarily require large capital investment okay it forms a sound basis for any further pollution control measures and it has been a demonstrated in many parts of the work that including in india that it works so basically the chinese prof say a composite of two separate characteristics danger and opportunity so basically that okay you have to identify the danger and you have to see whether in this danger have any any opportunity is there or not so once you see that okay this has been this thing so uh, and uh, uh, why you should go it is basically just increasing regulation of government pressure is there increasing cost of the waste energy materials life cycle thinking and their stakeholders pressure is there to reduce the cost so all those things are, uh, are beneficial to us so uh, this is what something on cleaner production i think uh, uh, i have tried to give you the basic uh, philosophy behind what is a cleaner production why we should go for it what are the benefits to the society what are the benefits to the uh, units and, uh, and then what are the steps involved and uh, through the example we have tried to see that okay that is a very workable sort of a solution instead of having treatment technologies we are going for this uh sort of a uh mm -hmm. techniques uh so i think now we can come to end of the our this pro, uh, this session